you know, most of us, there's a lot of, a lot of mistakes that are made in the trade, and a lot of them come from this area right here. This, this column's got all these degree temperatures on them, and, you know, the 9 degree column is one of those things that is so rarely understood well or completely or correctly that it, it, it causes a lot of problems. But, you know, if you look at this table as not a wire table, but something different, it'll help. And I can tell you, let's just say under the rope, that, that, that 6 degree column for the number 10, let's just say that that number 10 is rated for. 30 amps on the security column. So we're, we're artificially stuck in that column for Romex, right? So, so that book's telling me that a number 10 wire in a Romex is only good for 30 amps, right? I can tell you for sure it's good for at least 85, and it'll run 85 amps for about, about a month and just a little past that, about a month and a week to be exact. And it won't hurt that wire a bit. I promise you that, that 85 amps, in fact, you probably put a couple hundred amps on that number 10 and it wouldn't really hurt the wire at all, right? Now, the insulation, the Romex, you know, is a whole different story. And I know that it'll do that because I, I, I used one as a feeder for us, you know, permanent service for that uh, auto temporary <coughs> panel for a while because I had some people living in the house and couldn't get my inspection passed and kind of a big mess. So, you know, saved my hive just they still had power in the house and number 10 that was running from the uh, temporary panel of the house for a little bit. About a month and a week actually, about five weeks worth. So I, I said kind of as a joke, but at the time, you know, it, it worked just fine. Now, when I pulled that Romex off of there and, and you know, take it and throw it back in the truck, that thing cracked like it was a bunch of rifles shots going on. Because it just, you know, it bakes it. And just the insulation on it was shot. The dielectric property's gone, you know, the, the bubbling on the terminations at the end, it was so bad that you'd have to use a knife to scrape it off really if you wanted to get to use it again. And so Really, it, it's, you got to get away from the wire part of it and look more on the insulation, and that's exactly what this table is all about. It's the it's the plastic or the rubber or the nylon. It's that outer coating that's on that wire that really is what we're talking about, and it all has to do with heat. Period. It's all all it's about. And anything that we put this wire near or on or around that's got additional heat stress, we have to compensate for. It. So looking at it from that standpoint, it might make a little bit more clear idea of what we're dealing with. And so the first thing to look at is at the top of the table. This table is based on two things. An ambient temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And I'm on page 154, so I'm on the, I'm on the page that's on to your left there. Every, everything that we're dealing with in the next hour or so is gonna be even number pages. So if you find yourself on an odd number page, for the example, the one there to your right, Put a big X to it because you don't want to get distracted. Don't ever try to use the table that's on page 155 because uh, it's not for, yeah, just put a big X to it so that way it won't distract you. It's that table there to your uh, left on page 154. <laughs> All right. That, so it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The second thing that we uh, have to look at is it's based on not more than three cables in the same raceway. So it's not open air conductors, it's not, it's three wires in a raceway at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And anything that deviates from those two things is a change from that core capacity that you're looking at on the table. So step one on any wire deal is that we're gonna have to have a core value that we look at. And then we've got two classes of thermal considerations. One is that ambient temperature, and the other one being the number of current current conductors that are in the same raceway. All right. Now, within step one, we've got our own special uh-ohs and things to watch out for. Step two, which is the first thermal class to worry about, the ambient temperature, it's got its own kind of characteristics and things to watch out for. And then step three has its own little quirks. So each one of those has got problem areas, and if you're not careful, it's easy to go off on, on any one of those steps and kind of find yourself in the, in the weeds. So every step's kind of got to be clear and, and concise. Now the first step is you're looking at just the table itself and trying to select that core start and passing, okay? What do you use, the 60, the 75, or the 90? And so all the notes and stuff that you see there um, in your textbook on there, all of those kind of go into that, that first step. Just kind of put my you know, fingers to dry right now. Grip on it. You see in the textbook, I've got some uh, notes there, some boxes and some different things. First thing I've got is kind of a note at the top right-hand side. That the head of the table tells you that it's temperature rated conductor, C table 310.104A, and I've got a uh, page number in a little box there. It says C page 167. Kind of going from this note that I've got above the 9 that says dry, right? So write the word dry, wet, and Romex above your uh, temperature conductor. Motor to transform is going to 75 degrees. You don't necessarily have to block block out the, the XHHW and the THHW like I've got it right there, but, but the notes above there for sure, 
And then that page 167 is a nice note to write to the next there. So some of the things that you see on there need to be kind of uh, converted. Now the two boxes that you see I've got marked on the bottom, the red and the yellow, that's just to make sure that you understand that the first three are copper and the other three are aluminum so you don't get caught, you know, uh, picking the wrong size, wrong side, I guess, uh, the wrong side then the wrong side. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to box yours out, but that big red bar on the right hand side of that 75 degree column, you do want to put on your book. And that, guys, is a big, uh, you, it's a roadblock. It literally, trying to get past that bar is just impossible. So. What I'm trying to say there with that red bar that you see and that you're about to write to the right of that number, that 75 degree column is the absolute maximum amount of opacity that you will ever answer on any test question that has to do with any standard wire, standard equipment, or anything else. Okay? The 60 degree column is the maximum for your Romex, but for other wiring methods, which is the normal stuff we deal with, what that 75 degree number is, is king. And it's all said and done. After all the dust so. So in other words, if I have a conductor rated at, you know, 194 degrees Celsius, it doesn't matter. When I take that wire off the shelf and I actually install it, the minute I put that thing under a binding screw on a terminal, any kind of a, a, a breaker, any kind of a, a motor, anything else, the maximum rating for almost any terminal that I've ever seen in, in my trade experience, certainly on any of the normal smaller frame breakers, maximum value for those terminations are 75 degrees Celsius, period. Which means that that wire, that lug is rated for a maximum wire size, and so let's say on a 20 degree breaker, for example, that rating of that lug is a maximum of number 12, maybe number 10, I think, maybe possibly. So that lug itself, whatever the value you're looking at for that maximum wire size under that 75 degree column is the maximum rating that you should run capacity through that lug on. So it becomes the, the weakest link or the lowest level value of the entire branch circuit. So the wire could be capable of running, you know, double or triple whatever that rating is thermally, but you can't get past that termination point. Okay? So that means that if 75 degree value is, if, you know, effectively if, if a number, let's say a 4 watt, has a maximum value of 230 amps, because the, the, the lug I'm putting it on it has a maximum value of 230 amps to 75 degrees, why do I have a 260 degree value on the book anyway? What's the whole point of it? Why is there even a 90 degree value to even confuse us if that's true? Right? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? And, and so a lot of guys make the mistake saying, well, if it's here, I can use it. And, and you can. It's just that the way we use it is very specific. And, and, but yet when it's all said and done, however you start, you can't end beyond the 75 degree because that's the maximum value for the circuit, right, sir? Okay? So it might be great to run as an exercise of what it looks like on the shelf, but you know, when you put it into something else, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at. On the notes that you wrote above that, when you put wet above the 75 degree column, dry on the 90, and then also on the 75 foot motors and uh, transformers, your transformers and your motors artificially under 110.14C uh, have a 75 degree maximum value that you use, and so you're looking at no matter what the wire is rated at, you're going to start with 75 degree and, and then you know, either there or considerably below, depending on your new rate. All right, so you got a big decision to make when you have a wire that's rated for 90 degrees. And so when you're looking at the designations on the wire, let's kind of give you a quick rundown. A, you know, a T is a thermal plastic or some sort of a, a thermal resistant type outer covering in plastic. A single H is a 75 degree. Not a pound sign, but a single H is a 75 degree rated. Okay? So THW then is a thermoplastic wet rated. Remember we talked about that yesterday? And it also has a 75 degree rating. Now THHW, which is another H stone in there, is a 90 degree rating. If you have a W, that's the wet uh, uh, locale that we talked about yesterday. The X is just a synthetic, so an XHHW is a synthetic blend between some plastic and rubber, some mixture of that. The R that you sometimes see is a rubber, or a rubberized type of uh, label. Uh, let's see what else we have. N is a nylon outer covering, so that's what the N stands for. Uh, the Z is some kind of a chemical uh, name that I can't even pronounce, so don't, don't even try to get me started there. Um, You'd be in uh, underground, I think, if that's if I'm not mistaken. It's either underground or I'm pretty sure that's what the U stands for. I can't remember off the top on that. But the M stands for medium voltage. So you've got, and then I, I being uh, insula, or mineral insulated is what that MI stands for. Mineral, 
No, and then of course the MD is a medium voltage, so I guess it's never either one of them. But these are the core ones that we really worry about. There's one more though that, that really kind of makes a big difference, and I'm gonna put it up here because this really kind of goes with this right here. A dash two, you'll notice that you have some wires that are under the 75 degree column. You got some wires that are that are under both columns, right? So for example, an XHHW dash two is only under the 90. You don't see it duplicated on the other 75, but you do see just the plain XHHW by itself in both columns, right? What that means is that, you know, when, when I think of a wet type, you know, application or a wet location, I think of something cool. I'm thinking of a swimming pool. Or I just